Toronto, <laughs> December 2017 <laughs> for the uh, Women in Film Toronto Crystal Award. It was wonderful to be in a room of strong women. We all know the challenges, there, no one there doesn't, from young to the yeah. oldest people there. There was a guy that I went out to, a very s senior professional guy, he was there, and I said, how great that you're here and you're supporting, and his response was, why wouldn't I come, you know, to be in a room of beautiful, hot women? I can't imagine a woman going to a, a, an event where a lot of men were and going, yeah, I'm just here to see like hot, great guys. And if they and if they said that, I think it would be a woman just trying to fit in. Yeah. How do you choose your project? What's important to you? Now that I'm older, I think more of legacy things I want left. I don't want to just do something just for the fluff of doing it or just because it puts a little bit more cash in my pocket. Now I think you're thinking about things of when I'm dead and gone, is this something, is this story, is this, um, you know, what's communicated here, something that will resonate a long time after and that people could watch that and learn something and, and get something out of it. I think of those things more. Can you talk about the challenges of being a woman of color and trying to find roles of a certain age? It's incredibly challenging. One, the business has changed for me because I'm older, but two, the business has changed, period. Even if I were this age 40 years ago when my career started, it would have been a different career. I think actors who want to do more serious roles have to create them for themselves. I think it's almost impossible to wait and hope that someone else is coming up with the kind of story that you think is really valuable. And what's great is so few great stories have been done about black women that I know there are millions of them out there, I just haven't found them yet. <laughs> so I just, you know, they're hard. There's not, there's not as many books that are published. Yeah. Um, the book I'm reading right now is Moving Beyond the Borders. It's about black Canadian women. It's a, a woman called Karen Flynn who wrote it and she interviewed so many of these um, African-Canadian women and Caribbean women who moved to Canada but w that were in nursing and were talking. That was one of the probably one of the first jobs that a lot of immigrants came to Canada on. A lot of women came here with uh, um, to become to, to be nurses. They already had their degrees. So I'm reading those stories trying to find something That's that might be interesting there. There's so much fascinating stuff. Stories that are not stereotypical. What made you decide to start the Real World Film Festival? Well, knowing that I started my career in, I think it was 19, uh, 1976, 1977, um, and being one of probably the first um, black television film people to be in any kind of mainstream things, I had a really unique perspective about how this business um, works and how the challenges of doors opening. But what surprised me was that by the late 90s, I hadn't seen, seen that much progression. Things looked like they weren't moving that you know forward especially for people behind the camera um, you might be st starting to see some faces in front of the camera in the late 90s but you weren't seeing people in broadcast you weren't seeing a lot of producers you just weren't seeing people behind the camera and I've learned the most and grown the most going to film festivals because you get everybody on every level and so the idea just came to me that instead of all these people because you get a, I get a lot of people of color coming to me personally ask me a million questions that I don't even have answers to. Yeah. Um, it's not like I know every single part of the, the industry. So I wanted to come up with what's an initiative where they could all come, these people, and get those answers by other more experienced, more knowledgeable people than me. Yeah. And the idea for the film festival came out of that. So I wanted the Festival of Real World to represent, it. we focus primarily on Canadian filmmakers. And when I say filmmakers, that could be people in front of the camera as well, um, but are racially diverse. And there was nothing like that at the time. It's so funny now to see a lot of young people, they take that kind of thing for granted. But back in 2001, when we did the first festival, people were shocked they hadn't seen anything like this, um, bring, the bringing of that kind of community. And we had people from the, you know, when I say racial diversity, it was indigenous people and all racialized people, um, black, South Asian, Asian, um, um, everybody so sort of bringing them together Middle Eastern all multiracial communities that were here and we've made a real impact you know now that we've been around for 18 years I'm so proud to be able to say that we've had filmmakers that started with us in the first two three four years that are now in really senior positions working at broadcasters or having their own big bigger production companies making great content that's what makes me really proud